Good afternoon, everyone. This is T3 Live Editor-in-Chief John Darcy here to bring you the daily recap. So as far as the market goes, we had another sort of choppy day. Not a ton of action from an index perspective, but uh, if you are an, a trader that's looking for individual stock moves and looking for volatility in individual names, uh, we, we keep harping on this, but there's really a lot of volatility out there and there's a lot of movement. Uh, there's a lot of news. Obviously, it's earnings season, so that's playing uh, a bit into it, but uh, you have other news that is really like I said, triggering a lot of volatility and, and making it so traders can sit at their desk uh, and not run off to the beach like you sometimes see in late summer, uh, despite that lethargic action in the indices. I'm joined again today for the daily recap with Mike Lombardo. Uh, he's the managing director and head trainer of the T3 Live PDP program, uh, which is a program designed, it's a three-week intensive in-house program at our New York City training facility uh, that's designed for people who want to become full-time uh, and maybe professional traders even. Uh, we have several courses that we offer at T3, from the swing trading course uh, to the active trading course, the momentum trading course. They all offer various different types of education, but uh, the PDP course in particular is designed for, like I said, people who want to become full-time and maybe professional traders. It really provides that crash course intensive program over three weeks. It's followed by a mentoring period uh, that really gives you hand-on hands-on guidance from uh, not only Mike, our head trainer, but also several other members of the T3 team. I want to welcome Mike again to the Daily Recap, and he can provide a little bit more color on himself and the program. Thanks, John. Um, yes, the, uh, the program, it's a three-week program. Um, first week is, is basics, uh, just introductory. Second week is more technical. The third week is various topics such as uh, psychology, money management. Um, and we've gotten a Great feedback from it. Uh, guys are responding to it, and um, it's it's really uh, it's really taking off. So, Mike, from your perspective as a short-term guy, what do you make of the market action today? Or, like I said, is it sort of one of those things where you've sort of put the spiders off your radar a little bit because of the choppiness and the tight range, and you're focusing more on individual names? Or uh, what's your take on the yeah. overall broad index action we've seen hey, recently? We, market right now is consolidating. Right, uh, we are sitting above um, close close to highs. And although the S&Ps and, and, and the spies aren't moving around that much, like you said, there are individual names that are definitely uh, volatile and giving traders a ton of opportunity uh, uh, to make money in. So if, if you're in the right names, if you're in the right stocks, there's certain, certainly plenty of opportunity out there. All right, so we'll take a look at, at a visual of the spiders <laughs> just so you can get a look at, at the market to see what we're talking about with these tight ranges. If you've been following the market, you've likely seen it. We've got to go out to a daily chart here to get a look at it. But like, I, but like uh, Mike said, we're sort of hanging up near highs. We haven't got that uh, 1700 print on the S&P that maybe a lot of people have been looking for uh, and talking about that psychological level, but continues to be healthy digestion. We're seeing at upper levels, and people are really just waiting sort of for well, we could, well, Fed the, announcement and exactly. stuff like that. Exactly. Uh, the, Fed, the Fed meeting tomorrow could be the, uh, the catalyst to possibly get us uh, The Fed's uh, been the, the big driver of the market you know, over the past even since the financial crisis, but it seems like more and more people are simply hanging on uh, the words of the Fed as the big driver for the right. market, uh, rather than, you know, we've seen earnings have an effect on individual names. When you talk about macro effects, uh, it's been the Fed really driving index action. Agreed. So we'll go into some of those high beta names, and uh, one that's had a lot of beta and a lot of alpha recently, in fact, is Facebook. <laughs> it has to be uh, what we lead off with today in today's daily recap, because uh, last week, I did a couple videos late in the week, a couple daily recaps where I talked about Facebook after that gap is that, you know, an amateur untrained eye might look at that big gap up in Facebook and say, man, Facebook has been this terrible stock ever since it IPO'd. This big gap up is another chance to potentially fade or, or sell short this gap up. But I cautioned that and I, I even made the point that when you have a big disruptive gap like you saw in Facebook, a big di disruptive earnings report, I like using that word because they really flipped uh, the whole dynamic of that company and that stock on, on its head with that earnings report. They were struggling with uh, building revenue from mobile ads and things like that, made a huge jump in that and the stock responded in kind, obviously a 30% move. And then after it held that gap on the day after the report and the following day, it told me the stock was headed higher and it was headed back for that IPO price of $38. And over the last two days this week, we've gotten that move up to the $38 level. Uh, Short-term guys have been paying more attention to it than they have at all during its public life. Mike can shed a little bit more light on that and perhaps what he sees as the future for Facebook about 
maybe it's a stock that's going to be more and more on the radar of short-term guys after maybe not being that way uh, up to this point. Yeah, you, you mentioned the, uh, the earnings report. Um, unlike Tesla, the short interest in, in Facebook was, was minimal. Mm -hmm. So this price action is being driven by, by new longs coming into the stock, that uh, investors that are wanting to get involved in it. So there's a little bit of a difference between this move and, that we see in, in Facebook and, and to that of Tesla. Um, on the daily, if you want to bring up the daily. Let me go to the daily chart here of uh, Facebook. There you go. Uh, the $38 IPO price, psychological level, we hit it. Stock is a little bit extended here on, on, on the daily time frame. Um, in fact, possibly look for maybe some sort of uh, reversal, outside reversal type move or 80-20 uh, tomorrow. It could trigger. You need to be aware of let the thing base a little bit, consolidate. It's really hard to get involved up at these levels. But on, on a short-term basis, um, the stock is giving traders plenty of opportunity to make money. Yeah, I know we talked a little bit about on Friday things not to do when trading high beta names and things not to do when trading stocks that are moving big. And one of those is to jump in to either side of the trade blindly without having some sort of calculated plan for the trade. So Mike was talking about potentially looking for a reversal in Facebook. Another thing, amateur untrained eyes you know, might be just blindly trying to short a stock like this because, hey, it's up X percent in you know, a week. Maybe I'll look to jump into the short side. Everything you do has to have a plan, has to be calculated, has to be based on a set of rules, and that's something that is going to be talked about. Uh, we're hosting a webinar on Thursday at 4.30. Uh, Mike is hosting a webinar where he's going to talk about some of those tactics that's taught, that are taught in that PDP program, and that's one of the big things they talk about when talking about uh, trading those high beta names. Um, looking forward to uh, <laughs> giving the webinar. Um, and you know, it, it's for traders who have perhaps a little bit of experience, um, or, or, or those who are new to trading, uh, I think trading a stock like Facebook, and, and I can show you an example um, today, it can give you a real calculated entry into the stock and, and uh, perhaps give you the, the conviction to, uh, to get involved in some of these names and, and take your, your trading to another level. All right, well Tesla, obviously if you're gonna talk about high beta, Tesla's always uh, towards the front of that list and it remains in play. Uh, today it was provided some nice two-way action uh, after initially pushing a new all-time highs. The stock gave a little bit of a reversal signal as it came back down below those previous highs. And then there was a negative article that came out from Citron, Andrew Left. Uh, famed short seller. He's well known for putting out bearish theses a lot of times on Chinese stocks that he uh, considers are doing some things that are a little bit uncouth and things like that. So to, for him to come out with something negative on Tesla was a little bit surprising and maybe not, I thought it might not be quite as effective as some of the other attacks he makes, but it did trigger a down move in Tesla. Like I said, nice two-way action it did, is it did close off its uh, lows a little bit. We'll go ahead and take a look at the chart. You can see here push to new highs, reverse back below. Looked like it might be headed for an outside reversal, which is a huge technical signal that we talk about in all of our courses in the PDP program, uh, one of the patterns we talk about. But it was able to close off its lows uh, to negate some of the severity of today's move. From your perspective, Mike, what were the, some of the things that you were looking at in Tesla today? Well, the when the, excuse me, when the report came out, definitely uh, you know, noticed a little bit of weakness. Uh, some guys took advantage of it double bottomed uh, off of yesterday's low um, and, it, and again you know three four days up and you always have to be a little bit uh, wary in, in these high beta names after a three four day up move um, certainly you can get the fifth day but uh, you know you have to be um, on top of those stocks that have made that extended move and, and you do get reversals like this in these names and, and again gives traders plenty of opportunity to get involved. Well, you talked about Facebook how and I think it's a very interesting point is that the move in Facebook is different from a move in a stock like Tesla because there's not that huge short interest in Facebook. You know, Facebook's rise can be attributed uh, mostly, in my opinion, to big institutions and fund managers now looking to get exposure to Facebook because of its huge growth in mobile. Uh, that's one of the big criteria people look for in a stock like Google, a stock like Facebook, is how well are they doing on mobile because mobile is the future. And when those huge numbers came out regarding Facebook's mobile ad revenue growth, that was, I put it on Twitter, you can follow me at Darcy T3 Live, but I talked about how fund managers are going to be scrambling to accumulate Facebook uh, after those numbers. But Tesla is one that 
has been the product of a short squeeze. It obviously had a huge short float. I started talking about it in the $40 range, the potential for a huge move. And some of those short sellers are still hanging on for dear life and it's fueling a big up move. Do you treat a stock differently like Tesla that is the result of a short squeeze compared to something like Facebook that's the result of actual buying and accumulation from big institutions and things like that potentially? When, when you're dealing with a, sh a stock that's heavily shorted, you usually get uh, the swings in those stocks uh, will be will tend to be a little bit more dramatic than let's say to that compared to to Facebook where you have there's a fundamental reason to be in uh, in Facebook right now you know it's a high growth stock as opposed to Tesla where some people definitely believe in the in the um, long story however understand that majority a good good chunk of the the move is being driven by by shorts who are looking to cover who are scrambling to cover so there is you always have to keep that in mind when when trading these types of names. What's driving the action? I think that's definitely an interesting point to consider when you trade any stock. You know, is it you're trading one with a high short interest or you're looking for a squeeze? Things might be a little bit more over dramatic according to Mike's analysis uh, with those types of stocks compared to something like a Facebook uh, that's actually the result of accumulation by institutions. Interesting point, I think. Apple also, another one sort of like Facebook that uh, people have sort of written off and, and ignored it for the last few months and a few months plus for Apple, basically a year of really lethargic price action, but it's looking like it might have a little bit more commitment to the upside than we've seen at any time in the last year. Uh, most rallies in Apple have been sold within the first few days and it's you know, fallen back down towards key support levels. It's held some of those support levels after uh, that real sharp decline down below $400 uh, after it topped out above 700, but over the last few days we've seen a little bit more life from Apple, like I said. So take a look at the chart of Apple. You can see nice three-day move. Uh, it held that earnings gap really well despite uh, gapping down on the third day after it. It ignited there and then continued. Once it broke above this pivot high, that was a conservative entry potentially. And then you got a nice day and a half of follow through. It did close a little bit off its highs after getting rejected here at this resistance level. But Mike, I know uh, you and I have talked about how a lot of your uh, people that you sit near and, and traders that you know have sort of been gravitating away from Facebook, uh, excuse me, away from Apple because it's not been in play. Yes, it has been a darling of the market uh, for many, many years, but you've got to trade what's in play and Apple has gone off the radar a little bit. Is that going to change based on its recent strength in this, this three-day move after earnings? Good. I, I, I mentioned on Friday that, uh, you know, Apple was a stock of 2012, at least for, for the first six, seven months, and then completely changed composure and broke down. And here you have a very surprising earnings report, very much like a Facebook, um, and it would not surprise me. The stock is still down on the year, so to get back, uh, even to unchanged, uh, you're looking at another 50-point move from here, uh, approximately. So, it could be the stock of the second half, uh, the inverse of what it did last year, where it led the market for the first six, seven, eight months, then trailed, and first six months completely lagged, and now uh, it could be could be the uh, inverse. I know one of the concepts in the PDP course, which I've gone through and I helped create with Mike and the help of the team here, is context. Understanding where a stock is and what the expectations are heading into something like an earnings report or just understanding context and expectations in general. And both Apple and Facebook are examples of stocks that Apple people have written it off. There's no real product catalyst right now. They're sort of in the middle of their new iPhone product cycle, which iPhone is their big uh, revenue driver. There, there's talks of you know the 5S being in the works, and yes, that'll probably come out sometime in the next few months. But there was no real catalyst in this earnings report that people expected to give any life to Apple. And as a result of that, just decent numbers that were slightly above expectations were able to trigger a nice move in the stock. Same way with Facebook. People weren't expecting anything from Facebook. People have written it off as a company that doesn't understand mobile, a platform that's not built for mobile, and they didn't expect any real game changer from an earnings report and due to the fact that the expectations were low and you understand that context, we've seen a huge move in the stock. And so, you know, when people, amateurs, untrained eyes, I keep referring to that, but when those people look at earnings reports, sometimes they'll say, oh, a stock beat on expectations, but it's lower. What's going on? Why is that stock down? Uh, and then another stock might, uh, you know, not meet expectations, like an Amazon that we saw last week. They were expected to make money. They swung to a loss, but it still goes higher. You have to understand the context and the expectations. You also have to be able to dissect an earnings report a little bit, which is something that uh, we teach a little bit in the PDP course in addition to the technical analysis-based program. 
Yeah, trading, trading earnings, trading gaps is always tricky. It's uh, we devote a topic, we devote an entire day to that topic, um, and probably the biggest key when trading earnings and trading gaps is you have to know where the stock is coming from. Uh, you can't just randomly, like you said, just jump into it. Um, have some kind of strategy going into it. There, there's a couple of setups, uh, gap strategies that that we teach in the course, and. Again, just randomly jumping into stocks is, is a surefire way to lose money, especially in some of these extremely volatile names. All right. Well, we're going to close off the show, uh, close off the show, reminding you about that webinar at Thursday at 4.30 p.m. after the close. Uh, there will be the link to register for the webinar will be attached to the article that's attached to this video. So if you're watching this video on T3 Live, just look down and you'll see the link to register. Uh, even if you can't make it live at 4.30 for the webinar, uh, you should register because everybody who registers will be sent, uh, sent the link to watch the video uh, after the webinar is concluded. So it'll be a great opportunity to get some free education, get a little bit uh, more insights into Mike's uh, trading style and his type of analysis, and also an introduction into the PDP program uh, that we've already, after having Mike on the Friday Daily Recap, we've already gotten a lot of interest in that program. And I, I can promise you it is an outstanding program, outstanding education really a crash course, an intensive course uh, into becoming a full-time professional trader, what it takes, all that type of stuff. Mike, any more words uh, about the webinar or anything like that? No, I, one of the things I like to mention, um, it's a technique, um, the name of the web, uh, webinar is uh, uh, how to find or how to trade high beta stocks using uh, intraday relative strength. Um, and just to give you an example, uh, if you wanna bring up uh, today, just bring up the spies. Take a five minute look at the spiders here. And at about, well, this morning, uh, that bar right 10 there. 1055. This uh, is before the show we were talking about. I was like, Mike, what's an example of this intraday relative strength concept that you like to talk about, uh, that you like to teach in your course, that we could highlight an example of it from today uh, in this daily recap? Right. So, so a pretty, pretty wide red bar in, in, in the market. Uh, many stocks uh, retraced when that happened. And if you type up Facebook, again, what should Facebook? Be doing. Uh, Facebook should be retracing. Yeah, you think on weakness in the spiders. Exactly, Facebook. given the move that it's had, and what does uh, Facebook do at 10:55? 10:55 is this candle right here. Right. The stock just completely bases, consolidates, and again, shortly thereafter, as soon as the market uh, uh, bottoms a little bit and starts to show a little bit more strength, Facebook is off to the races and uh, extends higher. So that's the that's the essence of the of what I'm going to be doing, uh, what the webinar is about. It's a core component of, of the PDP. Um, and I look, look forward to, uh, to doing it. All right. Well, this has been John Darcy, your editor-in-chief here for the Daily Recap with Mike Lombardo, the head trainer and managing director of the T3 Life Platinum Development Program. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow morning for the morning call where I'll be co-hosting with Scott.